sixth graders. Today we are going to be talking about something new, something related to this vase here. Now maybe you've seen a vase like this before, or maybe you're just very smart and you can read the title of this slideshow, but this vase is from ancient Greece. It is an example of Greek pottery and the specific type we are going to delve into. So let's take a look at this. I want you to pause for a moment and think about what you can see. I can see there are some horses, there's a gladiator on a chariot, another soldier here, and I can see lots and lots of fine line details. Did you catch all those things? So those line details are the basis of what we're discussing today, simple line art in Grecian pottery. Greek pottery is from around about 1000 BCE to 400 BCE in ancient Greece. Let's pause for a moment. Maybe you have never seen this BCE before. BCE stands for Before Common Era, and Common Era being the zero. You might be used to seeing it as BC. It means the same thing. Um, in art history, they like to use CE as Common Era, BCE as Before Common Era, just so that the dates are more specific. Um, if you've got questions about that, feel free to email me and I can chat more. But let's talk more about this Greek pottery. So it was created by two artisans, the potter and the painter. Many worked in teams. Potters would make vessels for specific purposes and painters would add scenes from Greek mythology, history, or daily life. Most commonly seen in two different types, black figure or red figure. So going back to this first paragraph, there's potter and the painter. The first person would shape the vase or the pot and then after it's done being baked, the painter would create the designs on it. So since there's two types, black figure and red figure, looking at this image, do you think this is an example of black figure or red figure? Hopefully you said black figure because the figures are black. Good job. So black figure pottery. This became popular in about 600 BCE. The pottery came out of the kiln, which is a special oven made for cooking or baking uh, pottery. It came out of the kiln hard and ceram the ceramic was already red. So artists would paint black silhouettes on the red background. So let's take a look at this example. The, this reddish orangish color, that's the color that the vase came out of the kiln uh, when it was done firing. All of it was that red orange color. And the painter, would use the black paint everywhere where you see the black. That's the top, the bottom, and these figures. After the silhouette was applied, the artist would etch fine lines into the dried paint for details. We can see that here in these gentlemen's clothes and their hair. This is a very famous piece of black figure pottery, actually. It shows Achilles and Patroclus, and they're playing a game. And so to get those fine, lovely details in Achilles and Patroclus' clothes, the artist would let the black paint dry and then they would go in with a knife and cut into the paint to reveal the red again. Some black figure pottery painted the top and bottom of the paint pot in black as well. We see that here with that example. So, as I mentioned, there's two types, black and red. Let's talk about red figure pottery. Not a too creative of a name. We can tell it's just because the figures are red. This one became popular in about 530 BCE. The way BCE works, the, time, the numbers go backwards. So, black figure was popular in around 600. Red figure was popular in 530. That means it was 70 years later. It's a negative number. Uh, but, so red figure pottery became popular in 530 BCE. Pottery came out of the kiln hard and ceramic already red. So artists would paint the negative space around the figures in black. After the back, black background was applied, artists would paint fine details in line on the figure. Red 
figure was more difficult method, but it became very popular as it made easier made it easier to see the pottery and the figures from a distance. So they had this this vase come out of the oven, this reddish orangish color, and everywhere where you see black, that's where the artist would paint, including these teeny tiny thin lines on the women's clothing and on the horses. Now they would paint in the negative space. Let's talk about what that is. Maybe you've heard that phrase before, maybe you haven't, but it's a very important one. Negative space is the visual space of art around and between the subjects. Negative space is an excellent tool for accurate proportions. This right here is my favorite example of negative space. Uh, if, can I cover this up while you're still watching? I believe I can. Ha! Okay, let's take a look at just this picture right here. You're looking at a yellow vase or a yellow candlestick. Now, around on the sides of the yellow candlestick, do you see something? You might see two faces. That's what's being illustrated in that side that I covered up. Ha! Now that it, the faces are black, it's easier to see them. But if you're still having trouble, we have the forehead, the nose, the mouth, over here, the forehead, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. So the negative space, again, is all of the visual space around and between the subjects. In this picture, we have this archer lady, and she is shooting this man who she's she and her dogs have hunted. The dogs are killing the man, and she's going to finish him off. I'm pretty sure this is... Is it a, Artemis? Artemis is the Greek goddess who is the goddess of hunting. So I think this is Artemis. So she's killing this man and all of this black space around her is negative space. Imagine you're the artist who has to paint this on the vase. You would use like these triangles in between the man and the dogs to really define where you need to draw. That's why negative space is so important. Now, the vases themselves are very important and they all have different functions. You're going to uh, receive one of these pictures in your packet. You should already have them. We've got all these different types of vessels. I will go over their names really quickly, but if I would recommend you pause this page so that you can decide which of these vessels is your favorite because you are going to be doing a project with it later on. We have amphoras. Uh, these guys are the amphoras. We have peliques. The peliques look like... Where are my peliques? Oh, right next to it. Great. We have craters. We have lutrufus. Lutrufurus. Lutrufurus. And we have stamnos. The net first stamnos I have is over here. We have a cycter. This is the cycter. The hydria. Hydria. Hydra. H y d r means water. So you can tell the hydria was for pouring water. The gamicos. The lakeithos. The kylix. Where's my kylix friend? Here it is. The siphus. Um, Skyphus, excuse me, the Ar Aribalos, Alabastron, and the Pyxis. Now, some of these, like the Column Crater, for example, are going to have the same purpose of the other craters. So if you decide you really like one of the ones that has a separate name, like the Squat Lykethos, then you're going to look for what the Lykethos does to tell you what the Squat Lykethos does. And even though they're all shaped different, all of them have the same basic anatomy. Now, I'm assuming that you guys have probably been sitting at the computer doing your distance learning for a bit. So why don't you stand up and act like a pot? We have the mouth here. So if you're standing and your mouth is pointing at the ceiling wide open, ah, that is the same way the pot works. And if your mouth is pointed wide open, you have the neck right underneath, the lip right under the mouth, and the neck under the lip. The shoulders are under your neck. 
the body is under your shoulder, and then, of course, your feet are right on the bottom. They have some different descriptions in between as well, like a neck ring and a fillet and a handle. You obviously don't have a handle, but you can see that the anatomy or the body, um, body pieces of the vase is pretty much the same as the anatomy of a person. So if you really liked the lutrophos, you've got the mouth and the lip. Here's the shoulder, the neck. Here's the shoulder and the body and the feet. And all of them have the same basic form. So that will help you out. Okay, here's some examples of Greek pottery. These ones are actually photos that Oh no, these aren't photos that I found. So if you have your paper, your worksheet in front of you, I would like you to take a look at your worksheet and figure out what these four pots are. Pause the video, figure out which one each is, and we'll come back together. I'll give you three seconds to pause. Okay, great. So you should have found a psychter. With this guy, you should have found a Pyxis with this one. You should have found the Volute Crater with this friend. And this is the, uh, this is the Hydria right here. And I know because it has a handle in the back on the neck, it has an extra handle for the water. And these ones are all red figure. This one is a third type um, that was really famous at the very, really popular at the end of Greek times. Now, details and line art. Since Greek pottery did not allow for color or value, with the exception of that white pot, in the art, pottery painters relied on line for details and features in their pottery. This is the same picture of Achilles and Patroclus, and you can see much more how fine and amazingly detailed they are Look at the little stars and the swirls in their clothes and in their hairs. He's even got swirls on his armor. It's really fine, really detailed. The artist who made this was extremely talented. And it's those details that made it really interesting, even though they can't have color. So let's talk about line. Line is the first element of art. It is the most basic element of art out of all of them. It can be defined as a mark originating from a single point, typically long and narrow. They can move in any direction and path. This is another chance for you to move your body. So get your hands up in front of you and draw these lines in front of you. A horizontal line goes across your body, vertical, up and down, diagonal, across from top to bottom, parallel, use two hands like you're directing an airplane, perpendicular, you can make this perpendicular shape means that you've got one line that's horizontal, another one vertical, and they form two right angles. Thick and thin, that's kind of hard to draw within the air, but try it. Dotted or broken, uh, curved lines. Curved lines are just as important as straight lines. A lot of students seem to um, assume that a line is always straight, but it's not. It can be curved. It can spiral and swirl. Uh, the line can have a varied thickness, or it can be wavy, or even zigzagged. Move your arms, get that thinking. That's going to help your brain connect the lines. Now, here are more examples of these fine lines. If you look here in this uh, person's armor, they have so many lines cl close together that it almost appears like it's a different shade. We're going to talk about that skill a little bit more next year, but I want you to pay attention to the fact that it exists. They've got swirls here on the chest plates. Um, this person has swirls in the head. You can see the flourishes are made by lines that get thicker as they go out. Here with these uh, women musicians, they have thin, narrow, parallel lines to show that their clothes are heavy and hanging. Now, I got the chance to go to the Utah Museum of Fine Arts, which is here in Salt Lake City, and they do have Grecian pottery there. So while I was there, I took a video of one of their coolest uh, vases. Take a look at your 
worksheet and figure out what kind of vase this is as you take a look at it. See how fine the lines are? It's decorated on all of the sides, on the front and back. Really cool. And on the signs, they focused mainly on having decorations so that it was clearly meant for display. And, oh, shoot, I skipped. Wah! Okay. And this is another one. This is a, ah, oh, now I've forgotten the type. Kylix, that's what I thought. This is a Kylix. So you've got your red figure pottery. And uh, the cool thing about this Kylix is since the Kylix is used for storing liquids and for drinking out of, it's normally full. So think about if you go to a store and buy a mug, they might have some decorations on the inside of the mug, but it's mostly on the outside. The same with this Kylix. The museum displayed it by putting it on top of a mirror so that you could see the bottom. And we can see this cow and this farmer on the bottom of the Kylix. So other stylistic details. The figures in Greek pottery are almost always standing to the side and their faces are always in portrait side view portrait it means to the side painted scenes are usually narrative and not simply a portrait meaning they are referencing a scene with action taking place there are often multiple figures involved there is always a great deal of geometric decoration on the pottery usually on the handles lip neck foot or framing the narrative scene. We saw that in some of these examples. I'm gonna go back to this one. Lots of decoration on the neck here, on the lip. You've got the little vines with the, the grape leaves. So this slide is important because for your assignment, you're going to be designing your own Greek pottery. I will be, we'll um, start on it not next time we have class but a couple of a day after that so i'm going to tell you right now uh, the material you'll need is brown paper bag ideally the big kind that you get from a grocery store so if you don't have any lying around your house now ask your friends or family whoever's going to the grocery store next to grab one a big paper grocery bag i know they have them at winco that's where i go shopping so as a refresher, these are our vases, our decorative vases, and I would recommend today, use your worksheet, pick out your favorite, and sketch it. Just sketch the pot itself. Next time we're together, you're going to be practicing some of those really cool Greek designs that's going to go on your pot and also start brainstorming the action or scene that you want to depict. It can be something from your life. It can be something from your summer. Maybe you want to be meta and ironic, and instead of doing a big action scene like they do in Greek pottery, you can do yourself sitting on the couch playing a video game. Or it can be doing something you've always wanted to do, like swimming with dolphins, like on, uh, the Psycter over here, he's riding a dolphin. Or you can do something out of a book. We're doing, we're referencing Greek pottery because of Percy Jackson, which you'll be reading with Miss Harris. So maybe there's something in there you want to, to reference, or maybe something from a different book entirely. So sketch out some ideas, sketch out your favorite pot. And one last thing to do for today, I'm going to include a link from Hercules because that beginning scene, the very first scene with the muses, you'll notice the entire design, the entire animation style of Hercules is based around red and red figure pottery with the fine lines and everything. I can't play it now because YouTube would get me for copyright, but I am going to include the link so that you can watch it. Uh, so. I'll have your homework written down again. Sketch out those your favorite pot. Watch the Hercules video and try and get a hand, uh, try and get a hold of some brown bags. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.